Thank you for purchasing the MJ3 series dryer loader. This video will help guide you through the features of the unit and also aid in installing and servicing the unit to ensure its proper operation for years to come. It is a good idea to consult your user's manual for any reference points of the unit. The MJ3 unit is a dryer and conveyor of plastic resin pellets. The MJ3 uses the latest Matsui technology to provide accurate, stable drying and just-in-time conveying of plastic pellets. The unit is designed specifically for plastic pellets having a general bulk density range of 35 to 55 pounds per cubic foot. The MJ3 unit is not intended for use with powders, fibers, or liquids. At the heart of the MJ3 is Matsui's desiccant rotor. The desiccant rotor does not contain any desiccant beads as with conventional tower systems. Instead, Matsui adheres the desiccant to a durable, porous surface, which allows air to pass through with maximum air surface for optimum moisture removal. By turning the rotor with a drive belt, the rotor delivers super dry air, absorbs moisture, and then regenerates itself all in one continuous motion. The end result is constant stable dry air without the traditional dew point spikes or consumable desiccant beads. After uncrating the MGA3, it is necessary to identify and confirm all the components which were shipped based on your specific order. Among the common components are vacuum in material hoses, receiver hoppers, proximity sensors, and suction wands. At this point, it is also a good idea to confirm any additional options that were ordered, such as a dew point meter or cyclone dust separator. Should you feel that any of the components or options are missing upon setup, please contact your Matsui representative within 24 hours of receiving the unit. After all your components have been identified, you can start to install them as necessary. Start by placing the dryer within the vicinity of the press and ensure that proper power, compressed air, and for models MGA3100 or larger, cooling water is available. Install the receivers as needed onto either the hopper dry or injection press first. This will allow you to make exact hose length connections later. The hardware to mount the hopper receiver should be provided at the top of the lid. In most cases, your hopper receiver has been pre-installed at the factory for your convenience. Next, install the press receiver to the feed throat. Since not all presses have the same hole pattern, it may be necessary to drill the hole pattern into the press receiver at your facility. Matsui recommends that only experienced machinists perform this work, as it may render the hopper useless if a mistake in drilling is made. After the receiver is installed, the proximity sensor should be attached to the bracket provided. Now it is time to install the hoses. The amount of directions utilized will depend on your specific model. Generally, all MJ3 units utilize two directions. Number one will feed into the dryer, and number two will feed an injection press. The MJ3 also has the capability of a third optional direction to load another injection press. The easiest way to identify this is to observe how many vacuum ports are located at the top rear of the unit. In a standard configuration, the unit will have two aluminum vacuum ports. If a third port exists, this will be for the number three feeder or second injection machine. These ports are factory installed as one, two, and three from left to right as you face the front of the unit. If the drying hopper receiver has been factory installed, the vacuum hose to that hopper may already be installed. Matsui supplies a 15 foot length for each direction for both vacuum and material. The provided gray hoses for vacuum while the white hose is for the material. The vacuum and material ports on the receivers may vary between receiver types, so make sure to realize which end is for each type of hose. At the lower back of the unit is the material discharge port or batch damper. Using the white PVC hose and hose clamp, connect the length of hose to the damper, and then connect the other side to the receiving hopper on the injection machine.
The provided signal cables on the back of the unit work in tandem with each loading direction. The number one feeder signal cable should be connected to the hopper receiver and has a four pin female connector. Feeder numbers two and three typically connect to proximity sensors and have three pin connectors. If your unit loads to two proximity sensors, make sure they correspond with the appropriate loading direction before connecting. Although your MJ3 is equipped with a power cable, a plug must be installed prior to connecting to an outlet. Only qualified personnel should attempt to perform any wiring on the unit. Connect the power cord and plug according to local and state electrical codes in your area. Consult a professional licensed electrician when needed. Because the MJ3 has pneumatic and material valves, compressed air must be supplied to the unit. At the lower right side of the unit, there's a cutout with an air filter regulator provided. Determine what the best fitting type to use is and apply compressed air. After compressed air is applied, ensure that the provided quick slide valve is engaged to allow airflow. Open the regulator and adjust the air to approximately 0.5 megapascals. On some larger MJ3 units, it is necessary to supply cooling water for the aftercooler. If your unit has two water fittings in the back, this unit requires water for proper aftercooled air. If your unit has no existing water fittings, then it is equipped with an air type aftercooler and will cool automatically. After all proper components and utilities are finished and confirmed, it will be time to power up the MJ3 unit and put it to work. After all the necessary components and utilities have been installed, it is time to turn on the unit. Start by turning the main disconnect switch on the front of the unit to on. Next, hit the control on button to energize the power. The front of the control panel lights up and the internal cooling fan starts. This button acts as an energizing switch after the main supply power disconnect switch has been turned off. This section explains the purpose of the user settings and how to modify each one. By pushing the SV button, you can scroll through the nine user settings and modify each one. The SV or set value setting is for the main drying set point. Determine the temperature you wish to dry at and input it into the control panel. To do this, start by pressing the SV button. You will see the display of SV and the current setting blink alternately. To unlock the setting, push the enter arrow button, enter the desired temperature using the up down arrows, then lock in the setting by hitting the enter arrow button again. This process will be used for any settings that you change. The DLY or delay timer is a 100 hour countdown timer so that the dryer will turn itself on automatically after the prescribed time expires. For example, if you wanted the dryer to engage in 24 hours, you can set 24.0 into the display, and then hit the dryer button. The dryer begins to count down, and the dryer will turn on after the timer expires. The FD1 or Feeder 1 setting is the feeder one blower on time in order to load resin into the main drying hopper. As a general rule of thumb, Matsui recommends that you set this time in order for the hopper receiver to fill approximately 80% on each loading cycle. This will allow the number one feeder to load at maximum efficiency. Overfilling the receiving hopper may lead to a blower overload alarm or wasted cycle time. The FD2 or Feeder 2 setting is the blower on time for the Feeder 2, which typically loads from the dryer to the injection machine. However, for this setting, we need to consider how much time will be needed to sweep the line clean after each material batch. This setting should always be set longer than BT2, which will be explained shortly. The FD3 or Feeder 3 setting is the blower on time for the feeder 3 
an optional direction typically used to load a second injection machine. It is set the same way as FD2, however for this setting we also need to consider how much time will be needed to sweep the line clean after each material batch. This setting should always be set longer than BT3. The DC1 or discharge 1 timer is the estimated discharge time span for the feeder 1 receiver to discharge. In some cases, this setting may be shortened in order to decrease the duration of an overall cycle rate. The DC2 or discharge 2 timer is the expected discharge time for the level of the material to drop past the proximity sensor during the discharge for feeder 2. This timer may be set so that an exact just-in-time material feed is utilized, which may reduce the residence time of the material at the feed throat. The DC3 or Discharge 3 timer works the same way as DC2, but for the Feeder 3 line. It is only used when the optional Feeder 3 is purchased. The BT2 or Batch Timer 2 setting which is used to allow how much material is conveyed to the injection machine for the feeder 2 direction. This setting should always be set lower than the FD2 setting in order for the blower to sweep the line clear on each cycle. A typical setting for the BT2 time is 2 to 4 seconds. Feeder buttons 1, 2, and 3 will turn on the conveying portion of the unit. Feed 1 is for the main drying hopper while feeder 2 and 3 will convey to the injection machines. On each MJ3 unit, feeders 1 and 2 are standard and feeder 3 is an option. The dryer switch turns the dryer on and off. When turned on, the dryer light remains solid, the blower and heaters activate, and drying begins. When turned off, the dryer will begin a 10 minute cool down where the dryer light blinks, the heaters turn off, and blowers will stay engaged until the cooling time elapses. The reset button will turn the buzzer off should an alarm occur. However, the cause of an alarm must be cleared before the unit will fully reset. To check the regeneration temperature at any time, push and hold the reset and SV buttons together. The display then changes to show the current regeneration temperature, which has a factory setting of 428 Fahrenheit or 220 centigrade. Units equipped with the dew point meter option monitor the supply air dew point from the desiccant rotor to the main drying hopper. Once the dryer is ready, the dew point meter should display minus 40 constantly and is one of your best gauges to determine the dryer's performance. Matsui has designed the MJ3 unit to be as maintenance free as possible. However, there are still a few items to check on a regular basis. Checking the filters on a weekly basis is key to maintaining the drying and loading performance. To reduce any loss of vacuum through the closed loop, we recommend the filter checks be performed on a weekly basis to ensure they are not clogged or coagulated. When checking the main drying process filter, first turn off the dryer in order to shut down the blowers. A delay timer will turn off the heaters, but allow the blower to run for 10 minutes in order to cool down the heaters, thus avoiding an overheat condition when restarting. This will also ensure that no dust or debris will move past the filter opening once the filter is being removed for cleaning. Next, remove the filter box and cover to access the filter. After the cover is removed, the filter should be slightly lifted in back and pulled forward. Inspect the filter and clean it by blowing compressed air into a garbage can. Since dust may be blown into the atmosphere, Matsui recommends that a dust mask and safety goggles be worn to maximize safety. When finished, Place the filter in the filter box and replace the cover with the knob. 
The regeneration filter should be replaced in the same fashion as the main process filter. To remove it, squeeze the retaining clip until it comes out of the bracket. Then again blow compressed air from the back face to remove any debris that is clogging it. Reinstall the filter onto the bracket and also the retaining clip when finished. When inspecting the conveying filter, it is not necessary to shut down the dryer, but it is necessary to turn off the feeder switches on the control panel. If the light is solid, that means the feeder is on but waiting for a cycle. If the feeder light is blinking in one second intervals, the feeder is active. If you turn off the feeder in this state, the light will do a double time blink and then turn off once the active cycle is complete. When all the feeder lights are off, it is safe to inspect the conveying filter. Check the filter using the same method for checking the process filter. We recommend that the regeneration temperature be checked once or twice a month to ensure that the dryer is capable of removing moisture from the system. To do this, press and hold the reset and SV keys together. The temperature has a factory setting of 428 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. If the temperature has not risen to factory settings, it will be necessary to investigate the cause with proper personnel or contact Matsui directly for advice. On models MJ3100 or higher, it is ideal to use cooling water supplied to the unit's inline aftercooler for optimum performance. As a routine maintenance checkpoint, make sure all water valves are open and any hose lines are not kinked or leaking. Model sizes MJ3 15, 25, 50, and 75 are equipped with air-cooled aftercoolers, so cooling water is not necessary to install. On units equipped with a cyclone dust removal option, the canister should be inspected and emptied on a daily basis to ensure removal of excess dust from the receiving hoppers. We recommend that the rotor belt be checked every six months to ensure that the rotor is turning properly. Since most rubber belts are subject to wear over time, check that the proper tension is applied and tighten with the belt tensioner if needed. If the belt is cracked or broken, it is necessary to replace the belt. We also recommend a yearly routine check of all internal and external hoses for any looseness, punctures, bends, or kinks on your MJ3 unit to avoid any positive or negative pressure losses. We thank you for watching this instructional video for the MJ3 dryer loader. By following these basic instructions, your MJ3 unit will provide decades of reliability and consistency which has made Matsui a worldwide leader in plastics auxiliary equipment.